camp, we have Gage here and Mazik in here. This, when it comes to crate training, when you're first training it, it has to be a safe place. So we're not going to lock them inside every single time we put them in there. Otherwise, they associate it as a bad thing. Dogs are den animals. That's what some people don't realize. Crate training is not a mean thing to do. It's actually better for their dog's mental health. One, it can help to prevent separation anxiety because they learn this is a safe place and a fun place to go. This isn't a bad thing. It's not punishment. We never, ever, ever use the crate as punishment. Two, it also gives them a safe place and a quiet place to go. If this cage door is open throughout the day, Mazakin will go in there throughout the day. Um, and that's ultimately, most dogs are gonna do that if you make it a fun and a safe place for them to go. But the mistake that most people make is they just put the dog in there, give it a treat, and then close the door as soon as they start tra training them to go in the crate. Um, it's not what you wanna do, because then they learn every time I go in here, I get trapped in here. I don't get to go in and out as I please, and every time I get trapped in here, I'm forced to stay by myself and you leave. So we are creating it as a fun thing. So when you're first training it, you're not gonna lock them in every time. And when you do, it's only gonna be for a few minutes. For a dog that is becoming protective or possessive, whatever you wanna call it, for their crate, whenever they're locked in it, it's kind of actually normal. That does mean that the dog is seeing it as its own space, but it also means that it's starting to become territorial of the crate. This isn't uncommon, um, shockingly enough, especially in guarding breeds. It's not uncommon for them to become possessive of their crate because that's their space. And as I mentioned, dogs are den animals. So it's something that you can train out of them as long as you make sure that it's not like the dog is become, becoming neurotic because it's getting anxious. If it's an anxiety thing, then you need to restart with crate training. If it's an anxiety aggressive reaction, you need to restart with crate training because that means it's not seeing it as a safe place. It's not protecting the crate. It's becoming so anxious in here that it's not doesn't know what else to do. It lashes out at people. Um, as you can see, for throughout the day, I do put toys in there. So there's uh, two chew bones and a rope toy. She's closely monitored with all rope toys and all toys in general. Even though she has never ever swallowed a toy, every time I've seen her tear it up, she usually spits it back out on her own. So I'm not as concerned with her, but most puppies are not just gonna spit that material back out. They're gonna swallow it. So. First things first, don't lock your dog in the crate with any toys. Even if the toy seems indestructible and the dog has never torn it up before, you never know, it's the safest bet is to take any toys out if they're gonna be locked in there. If you're able to watch them and they're just going in and out as they please, you can leave the toys in there. That's why I leave them in there throughout the day. But as soon as she gets locked out, all the toys get removed so I know she's not gonna eat them. So, the first step of crate training is not locking them in. Some people think if you lock them in enough, they're just gonna get used to the crate. Some dogs may, it might happen, but it's not the best way to go about it. The best way to go about it is to do things like playing fetch through the cage. Basically what you would do is you can crouch down right here so you know you're not going anywhere, leave the door wide open, and then just throw a toy in there, have them bring it back, that kind of thing, and just doing that. So you know going in the cage is not a bad thing and you're not always gonna get locked in there. Another thing you can do after they've started doing fetch and they uh, recognize it as a fun thing, you can also use treats and start associating the kennel with the word. You would just say kennel, lead them in. They would go in, give them a treat. That's all you're gonna do. Kennel, go in, give a treat, let them come back out if they want. If they wanna stay in there, that's fine. Let them stay in there. And then you can start shutting the door. I understand that puppies do need to go in the crate at night, so uh, at night you can lock them in here, but you really want to keep building it up as a safe place. She doesn't sleep in her crate. Um, your dog doesn't have to if you don't feel like it needs to, and she's usually pretty good, so I don't worry about her. Um, but once you get that down and you feel like your dog is also associating it with a fun thing, that's when you're going to start locking it throughout the day. At night, especially if it's in your room, the dogs usually aren't gonna have as big of a fit because they can still see you, they know that you're there and you're not leaving. This is where it is gonna start getting tricky because you're leaving. So you're gonna say kennel, lock them in, shut the door, walk away, give it about five minutes, come back, let them out. That's all you're gonna do to start with. We're just gonna leave them in for five minutes. If they start whining, then you're gonna leave them in until they calm down. Um, if your dog is really struggling with the five minutes, you can start doing shorter bursts. You can't, in which case you're just gonna lock, start walking away, come back, let them out. 
as long as they're not whining. We never are gonna open this door when they whine because then they start to learn, oh, if I whine about it, I'm gonna get out. We never do that with anything. If the dog is whining, unless it's in pain, of course, if it's whining from pain, you're gonna try to figure out what's going on and try to help them. But if they're wanting to get what they want, we're never gonna let them get what they want because then they start to associate. Whining means I get what I want. So, that's basically it with crate training. It's basically making it a fun space, making it a good place to go, and making sure that right off the bat, you're not locking them in the cage and leaving them in there for 30 minutes, especially if you just brought it home. It's already adjusting to a new home. If you got it at eight weeks old from a breeder, especially, then that puppy isn't just adjusting to a no new home, it's also adjusting to not having its siblings and mom around. So you have to realize those are big changes in that dog's life. So if you can have someone come and stay with the dog, if you have to work or if you have to go to school, that's the best option. If you have to leave, if you can stay home with the dog, that's even better. That way you guys get some more bonding time. Try not to lock them in there for 30 minutes at a time at first, that can create a lot of anxiety for the crate. And when done improperly, the cage is gonna become a bad thing and we don't want that. We want that to become a safe thing. Now for crate aggression, if this was my space, I just had this little, I'm, I would go in there, but I'm, there's, I'm never coming back out if I go in there. But if this was my space, and people started walking by it, and I know for a fact that they could reach their hands through, but they're not going to, but I also know that I can't get to them if I needed to, I would become a little bit defensive of this space too. This is my space, and when someone's getting too close to my space, I may become reactive. Same thing with dogs. We created this as a safe space and their own space to go to, I don't recommend letting strangers or friends or even family just coming up to the cage when they're in here. I ultimately would, ultimately would like people to leave the dog alone when it's in its crate because it's, and it's, it's doing its safe time. That's its safe space. That's its own personal time. That's not a time when people get to interact with the dog. That's a good thing to take note of. But if your cage is in a little bit of an inconvenient spot and you don't really have anywhere else to put it, this big cage, not everyone will be able to fit in their room. Maybe it's by the doorway. Maybe it's in the living room. One, try to move it if you can. If you can find a spot to move it that's not where people are gonna have to walk by the cage, move it. Two, if you're dealing with a, an aggressive dog and it's never showing any other signs of aggression or possession, make sure it's not anxiety. Otherwise, if, again, if it is anxiety, we're gonna completely retrain them with crate training. Stop just throwing them in the cage, just completely restart and make it a safe spot and a happy spot and a, a space of their own. And lastly, try not to have people come up to the cage. In this case, the dog is, ta is taking the space as their own. Ultimately, when a dog is in its cage, it's taking personal time. Kind of like we usually go to our rooms when we need time away, especially teenagers, they go to their rooms to get away from their family that's their own space. We don't like it when people come in and out of our rooms. We don't like it when people are just walking in there because that's our time and that's our space. It's kind of the same thing with the crate. Now there are ways to kind of mitigate this. Um, one positive association with people walking by the cage. Do not let them stick their fingers in there if the dog is becoming aggressive, even if it's never bit anyone. If someone sticks their fingers in that cage, there's a good chance that dog will bite or will eventually bite because it keeps getting pissed off because people's fingers are just going like this at them. That's not, that's not cute. I wouldn't like that. This is my space. I don't want people's fingers coming in my space. So don't do that, but throwing a treat in the cage is not a bad idea. And let the strangers do it, not just the owner. If the dog is becoming aggressive towards the owner, you need to build your relationship. If the dog is becoming aggressive, or possessive towards the owner, that means your relationship is not that strong. Um, with our dogs, especially if it's an SD or an SDIT, you should be able to take up as much space as you want from that dog. That doesn't necessarily mean strangers can take in that space, especially in a crate, because a crate is their own space, but you should be able to do what you have ever you want. The dog shouldn't care about you pressing boundaries. That means you really, really, really need to build up your relationship. 
Another thing you need to do with a dog that's becoming a possessive or aggressive is build up their confidence. A dog that is becoming possessive of the crate to the point that it reacts to every single person that walks by the crate is not a confident dog. That's a dog that's saying, I feel like someone's going to take my space away. And that's a dog that's not confident. Gage has always been that perfect, not too confident, not underconfident. So he's never had any issues. He's never been aggressive. He's never been timid. He's never had, really, he's always been like that. That's been his constant mood his whole life. With Mazakim, she is just a little bit slacking in the confidence department. Now, she's not slacking enough to the point where she feels she needs to become aggressive to protect herself, but she slacks enough to the point that some things do scare her that wouldn't normally scare a dog. But at the same time, there's also things that would normally scare a dog her age that does not scare her. She's also just a weirdo. One, build up the confidence. Agility is great for that. Highly recommend agility. It helps them to build their confidence. So agility would be a good idea for that dog. Two, let people throw treats in there. Do not let people stick their fingers in there and do not let people get up against the cage. One, it's a danger to the person and two, it's just pushing the dog further into that I need to protect my space. Try to give the dog a good five feet around the cage where people cannot come into that space. That's just going to help until we can kind of work a little more where it's not becoming aggressive or reactive. Three, if your dog is anxious, you're going to build confidence and you're going to completely restart with crate training because it's not feeling safe in the crate. It's feeling like it has to be anxious and it has to be ready for something. So recognizing why your dog is being possessive or aggressive and then treating it from there. I do recommend having a behavior to so at least take a look but I understand that not everyone can afford that. So if you can't, it's okay. Um, try to see if there's someone that would be able to work with you um, either for really cheap or for free that could kind of at least analyze the dog's behavior and give you a treatment plan, even if they can't work that plan for you. Also another thing, on top of toys, make sure that there's not a bed in there that a puppy could chew up, because they will. If you're gonna put something in there for comfort, there's very thick mats that you can put down in there that add some comfort and they're not just laying on the hard padding of it. Um, another thing to do, this is a very large cage, as you can see. This is probably, I could probably fit two to three mazikines in here, um, but that's not always recommended. Keeping a smaller space does help them to not potty in there because they don't wanna lay in the potty. Who, want, who does besides pigs? So keeping a smaller space, this actually comes with a divider. So if you just want to get a big cage now while your puppy is still growing, you can do that and you can buy one that comes with a divider so you can divide it up so they only have so much room. And then they're less likely to pee or poo in there. Another thing you can do if your dog is pottying in the cage is put the food in there. Dogs usually won't pee or poo where they eat. Just like they won't pee or poo where they sleep if they have enough room if they don't have enough room to be able to pee or poo and lay down if they have this much room then they know they could go to that back to the back of that cage pee or poo and then come up here and lay down so two tips for making sure they don't go to the bathroom in the cage is making sure that it's a small enough cage where they don't have enough room to pee or poo and lay down without laying in it and putting their food in there to eat in there it'll help them to be like i don't really want to go to the bathroom where i eat or where i sleep so those are my recommendations i think that's everything i hope that's helpful crate training itself from the beginning is usually pretty easy and i'm sure there's a bunch of different videos on how to do that because it's a basic to having just a regular pet aggression isn't as likely to find other videos on but um, those are my techniques, that's what I use, and that's what's effective for my dogs and for the dogs that I've worked with. Um, if you're having problems with these techniques, go ahead and let me know in the comment section. Questions, comments, concerns, go in the comment section. Hope this was helpful for you guys, and as always, we love you.